Well, a closer look at our top story tonight. The National Wages Council is urging firms to trim non-wage costs as much as possible before resorting to any pay cuts or retrenchment. The tripartite body's latest guidelines for employers aim to sustain businesses and save jobs amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Desmond Chu, Assistant Secretary General of NTUC, joins us now. Desmond, so thanks for joining us and speaking to us. The National Wages Council, yeah, we know it's called for workers to focus on training and upskilling and for businesses to bring forward planned training for employees. The government has time and again encouraged this, but realistically, how much can we really retrain or upskill? I think as impossible as it sounds or to imagine, we will get past this episode. I think the real question for us is, in what shape will the workforce and companies emerge from this crisis? Will we emerge stronger or damaged in terms of capabilities? In the busy times, companies have no time to train. Um, during these such times, cash flow is a problem. So we are quite glad the government has put in uh, wage uh, training subsidies up to 90%, um, skills future enterprise, uh, to help with cash flows so that our companies can train our workforce, pick up new skills, so that when we do rebound, you'll be a substantial and significant one. For small and medium enterprises whose business models are already lean, how best can they ride through this period? I think it is uh, indeed very tough times for them. Um, they should work with uh, Enterprise Singapore. Um, they provide uh, things like Enterprise Trade Loan, Working Capital Loans. Um, all these will help them to tide over a difficult period. It, bridge, it really helps to build a bridge across rather troubled waters for them. The unions stand ready. Uh, we have plans like the company training committees that can help them to map what the training plan should be and tide over a rather difficult period. And if indeed cost needs to be managed, the unions will be working alongside the SMEs. All right, so saying that, so on adjustments for low-wage workers, you know, employers, they're recommended to implement a wage freeze instead of wage reduction. How much of a difference will that actually make in terms of softening the impact on them? In fact, it's huge. Uh, I, I must re-emphasize that the tripartite partners also agreed that where companies are doing well, they should continue to reward our lower wage workers, especially those earning up to $1,400 to give up to $50 in increment. I think it is to also acknowledge that many of our low wage workers are working a lot harder, especially in the environmental services sector, security sector. Um, by doing so, we will help to cushion and soften the impact because in doing down times, our low wage, lower wage workers are the ones uh, who feels the impact disproportionately. And for lower income families, uh, time is of the essence. and We don't know how long uh, this uh, COVID-19 situation is going to last for. What kind of long-term support is, av is available for them in terms of job security? I think we always work on a two-pronged approach. Um, the key is always jobs. We want to keep them in their jobs for as long as we can. And if they get displaced, they get retrenched, we can quickly place them into another job. So within the unionized sector, uh, the labor movement have put in place a job security council that can quickly help some of our workers be placed uh, into new jobs. But of course, there'll be some that might find it difficult um, so this is where interim measures like community care can come in, um, COVID-19 uh, support uh, package can come in to help to stabilize their families and their income in the interim uh, while jobs uh, come into play. Uh, we're quite happy to also see that uh, we also have the enhanced workfare payment. I think that will really help our lower wage uh, workers and their families um, to tide over a rather uh, very difficult time. Desmond, we're talking about saving jobs, but you know, for some, for some of them, that's just not possible. So retrenchment might be on the cards. And if it's necessary, despite all the measures taken, what aspects of an employee's ability should businesses look at before making the decision? And then the other hand is, what would you say is a reasonable notice period that employers should give employees, though? 
I think that I cannot uh, overemphasize the impact uh, retrenchment can have on a worker and a family. And so that's why uh, we must only resort to retrenchment at the, re at the last resort. And if it's to happen, um, a company, there are certain guidelines you must follow. It's a tripartite set of guidelines. It's important to gauge based on the ability to contribute to current business and also future business needs. At no point in time must an employer discriminate based on race, gender, um, family commitments. Um, all this uh, must not be considered uh, purely based on uh, capabilities alone. And in terms of notice, um, of course, as long a period uh, as possible is definitely welcome because then that allows the, um, the unions and uh, uh, parties like WSG to help in job placements. The longer the time we have, the higher the chance that we can help to transit a worker. So for the unionized sector, uh, usually a minimum period of 30 days um, is what we'll be looking at to help our workers. And just one last question for you. How is the Labour Union going to support those that do end up or, you know, in the event that some are retrenched? I think the first thing that uh, we really need to do is to get them back into the workforce as quickly as we can. Um, SG United uh, was just announced there will be about 10,000 jobs available. We are working very closely with the ministries to make sure that these jobs are in place and the process of placement can be done really quickly. Now, the second thing that we do will be stabilization packages. We need to assure workers that their livelihoods will be taken care of. So, for example, their children's education will be taken care of. We'll be providing uh, enhanced uh, uh, Comcast support. For example, from the 1st of April onwards, our workers can apply for temporary relief scheme. Uh, from May onwards, COVID-19 support package will come into play. So there will be a series of things that will help. Uh, even NTUC is also chipping uh, with uh, NTUC UCARE fund, uh, worth up to $25 million to support our workers. It is going to take a uh, multiple, uh, many hands approach uh, to keep our workers uh, afloat, pick up new skills in this period of time. It is going to be very troubled and choppy waters, but uh, we are confident the tripartite partners can build a bridge across these troubled waters that Singapore can emerge um, stronger from this crisis. All right, well, many thanks for your time this evening. Desmond Chu, Assistant Secretary General of NTUC.